you back I wanna give you every chance And I'll stand against all enemies Your enemies I'm afraid if I love you लिया था सब हो गया डायग्राम भी बन गए थोड़े बहुत दिखाने के लिए हम्म ये विजुलाइजेशन सही है तो अब ये चीज हो गई नाउ वी हैव द डायग्राम्स एंड वी हैव डिस्क्राइब ऑल द कांसेप्ट्स ऑफ थ्योरी वी हैव आवर एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिजल्ट्स सो आफ्टर हैविंग ऑल ऑफ दिस नाउ आई जस्ट नीड टू एक्सप्लेन दीस रिजल्ट्स द डाटा हैज हैज बीन ऑलरेडी रिवाइज्ड सो द रिजल्ट Yep. So, in the key point section that I wrote while doing the experiments, I have already written down all of the experimental results that are necessary, and then we can highlight them in here with the uh, we also have to explain the quantitative results also so these are all the qualitative advantages that are there but in the quantitative terms it is not only about this this is just a quantity of uh, this is the 
this we can say degree of of the new idea used but what do we need instead of this is also a quantitative results where we are explaining how much faster it is how much more accurate it is how much more interpretable it is interpretability can be interpreted from the graph itself we don't need a mathematical formulation for that anyway that's good that saves us some time but other than that we also have to explain all of this now right so these are the results we used for benchmarking and for the benchmarking results do we need to explain anything for the benchmarking results we just explain the neural network we used abstractly in very short and we will also write about uh, yeah that we are not changing any kind of hyperparameter while doing this experiment and we are continuing with the same hyperparameters and the same neural network for the same number of epochs as described in the benchmarking parameter and for the unconventional conventional we will also have to describe how we have broken down the steps and the implementation details are different this should not be confused with the experimental results the implementation details we uh, there we will write about the code and how we are actually implementing it uh, we can make some diagrams about our network too we can present them in the implementation details and section and that is not necessary to present this in this section so in the experimental results section now we can talk about yeah now let's write all of what i have said right now see
Okay. Uh, so these are the mathematical results we are going to implement. It's about the uh, in the board. This is so much. Yeah, with focused status, so it was lower than the hand. I think minus seven, minus six. Let's take last five validation losses and average them and use that as our right. So let's take the last five or maybe even higher. That's not a problem. So, yep, let's do that. I'll just open it here. Zero point two eight zero nine six six one zero point two seven 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 zero four seven 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 zero four plus zero point two seven nine three nine nine six Plus zero point two eight two three nine eight five five three nine eight five five plus zero point two eight four zero seven one three five. Now we divide it by five. 
inside of it. And what about the training time? 251.3905 or it and uh, let's see the speed of and accuracy too. Mm -hmm. The speed is 218.93330. Eight. That is fast. And the accuracy. Let's see the accuracy too. The accuracy for this network. Is that true? Let's see. Zero point two four four eight five. Yes. Nine two five nine zero eight one five one. Yes, zero point two six seven nine eight four three. Okay. Yes, zero point two five three 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 zero nine. Yes. Three three five. Yes. Okay. If you divide it by five, we have to divide it by five, right? Zero point two five one six. Zero point two five one six. Now let's see the speed of mm. let's see the speed and accuracy. Uh, 119 by accuracy. If by accuracy, yeah, zero point two seven one six six. Plus zero point two seven two seven zero four plus zero point two five nine six nine one zero five four four five eight plus zero five. Six, six, 
Yes. Now we have that ready. Those are our quantitative results that we needed for our research paper. Now this is completed. The graphs have been completed. The diagram has been completed. All the theory has been completed. I think that's a lot of progress. Now, for the implementation details, we'll be mainly using our code, and uh, I think it is pretty easy to do that. And at the same time, we'll just have to make we'll mainly represent our code, and we'll upload all of this code that we discussed so far into GitHub after commenting it even further and talking about it in further details, so that it is more convenient for everyone to understand this. And at the same time, yep, that that will suffice for the implementation details. Implementation details is gonna go to the end. And for the references, for the references part, I'll have to think more about it. I'm gonna reference things. So obviously, the uh, from I have used many different layers and ideas in this whole process. Where uh, as I have used the Safari hundred with Safari ten data set, the various layers i have used and uh, yeah everything that i have used all of that needs to be referenced and the idea of neuroplasticity i also have to find the research paper about neuroplasticity and reference it because yep that is that is where the idea came from so i think it needs to be credited for the same and uh, so those are the important parts now let's just talk about these quantitative results here that we have presented on the table let's just write this down and wrap it up for the day because i think yeah now the next step is to use different tools available such as chat gpt quill board and stuff like that use those tools to segment this data all of these findings into the correct form so that it becomes more accessible and convenient for anyone who is reading the paper and write it in a paper specific form making it more concise making it more understandable at the same time and using those diagrams and if any other diagrams if needed and write the references and stuff so all of these things that i'm talking about right now will be done with the help of a tool and we'll be using different tools for the same purpose we'll be using quillboard we'll be using Chat GPT will be using Grammarly. Grammarly we have already extensively used here, but we'll have to use it again after segmentation and seeing all of that. And I guess, yes, those are the most important tools that are we gonna use for referencing. We might also use Mendeley. Mendeley is also a very good tool for referencing. So those are the most important tools that we're gonna use. And for the implementation details, for the implementation details, uh, we'll just present our code as discussed previously. We'll write all about it. We'll all how we write our code, what it does. We'll uh, show a diagram of the model we have used. Because we have used the same model again and again. We have just changed the training, the way the model is trained. So that's the most important part of the paper. We are not changing the model. This is not a paper about the model of, or a new architecture in AI. It is a paper on how to train any architecture in AI. So it has a broad spectrum. It targets a larger audience. So I think that's the main benefit of this paper. And it is really accessible as you might have learned from all of the uh, explanations I have provided in this whole stream. It is pretty accessible. It is pretty understandable what I am doing. Why am I introducing these new dense layers? Why am I freezing the weights? What are the concepts I am using? And the results seem to align to what we expect. The results seem good. The results seem 
more intuitive more informative they contain more information about each layer and that is the biggest benefit of this book so let's wrap it up by writing about the details of uh, of these quantitative results let's try to explain them. let's get started with this
Okay, so here I have written the biggest highlight must be the interpretation capabilities because I know that these results seem to amaze us that the training traditionally trained neural network has been slower, the accuracy has not been that much and the unconventionally trained neural network has been training much faster and has a better accuracy. But there can be certain instances where I believe that the unconventionally trained neural network, the training technique that we have been talking about all this time, I think it may have some chances of overfitting where it may overfit each of the layers individually posing a problem in the long run when it sees an image that hasn't been seen ever before. Now when an image like that comes up, uh, I believe that that would cause a big problem to our neural network. Now to prevent any of such problem, we are using this technique that we described. So instead I have written a lot I'll be focusing on much more on the interpretation capabilities of this neural network because I believe that more important than the time, more important than this accuracy part because these are the things that can be fixed by hyperparameter optimization by the different model architectures that are being used by the new and new model architectures that are coming up for example there has been a current paper uh, related to transformers about retnet retnet is a special transformer that is much faster than traditional transformers so you know these kind of model architectures can improve the speed of training much more significantly as compared to a training loop so the speed is not much of my focus and the loss per iteration I think there might be some chances of overfitting and there can be some problems. Uh, I'll leave that up to the other people who review this paper in future to test this uh, study that does it really overfit the data or is it actually learning because when I see my results when I see my data I don't think it overfits because as we can clearly see the validation and training losses uh, I'll have to open up Google call app again but we have clearly seen right the training and see the training and validation losses are much equivalent they are not too far from each other at any time just like the base model so there is no chance of overfitting in all of this right so training loss is always smaller training loss is always smaller it is not like training small is training loss uh, i'm sorry i said smaller training loss and validation loss are always comparable training loss is much not far away from the validation loss which means there is no overfitting going on so our proofs will be that but instead of that i think the most important part of this network is the capability 
the of this training technique i'm sorry i keep saying network but the most important highlight of this training technique is the interpretation capabilities it provides because this level of interpretation it provides can help a lot consider this you are making a neural network for a completely different application that has been sought out to yet now what you have to do generally if you have to experiment with a six layer network and an eight layer network you have to train both of those networks individually to see which layer works the best and for instance if you change one layer in the middle and you test both of the results you can only interpret from the overall accuracy how the middle layer has impacted whether it is overfit whether it is underfit what has that middle layer impacted the overall network now it is very difficult to evaluate this why is it difficult because there may be randomness there may be chances that the training data that got that time might have caused it to overfit this time then it didn't before maybe there is so much complexity going on in the background right there is so much going on when you change your middle layer and you train from the beginning to end but now if you change your middle layer you can observe that middle layer's specific loss function all of those layers other layers remain the same all of their losses remain the same okay the noise doesn't matter but when it comes to that single layer that has been changed you can observe the graph of that layer that you change and the uh, for example when you are comparing the validation loss between those two layers and that is what you can compare and that is the power you get with this neural network so i think that is the biggest capability and this is an example that we must highlight in this paper so let's uh, add that to the key points as well because that is the most important point according to me if you ask me so uh, most important point interpretation capabilities provided by this training allow better coordination applications so that is the key point right that the change impact of change of a single layer can be studied in much more depth that allows us to make much better neural networks as we don't have to blindly guess how the network might be training how the hidden layer might be behaving inside but we can clearly see the graph of that particular layer and as i said how it is behaving inside and i'm not saying that so that is the point right keep that the network can be trained by the traditional method only maybe the final uh, prototype that you make can be made by the traditional method only the final prototype can also also be made that is the potential impact right potential impact In the final prototype may still be made by the traditional training technique but this unconventional so it's a faster more expressive method it
So that's it. That's the main point. That's where I'd like to end this. We have made a lot of progress. We need to add these points to the potential impact and application points. We have explained all we needed to. Uh, we need to explain these things further. We have to segment our data and after segmentation, we'll have to go through all of these points again so that we make sure that after the segmentation, all of the points sustain their value and they are presented at the right spot where they need to be. And other than that, I think that's uh, some good progress. And I hope all of you were able to understand neural networks after this. And yeah, I enjoyed this. I have not made this much progress in writing a research paper till now, but making taking this step allowed me to write a lot of content today, focus deeply in this field, and finally able to present some results, some code, and these amazing uh, properties that we have seen in this neural network. I like to test much more data. Uh, much more ideas about neural networks and stuff like that in future and if anyone is interested in working on a neural network idea or a deep learning idea that they have uh, we can collab we can do that and it would be great it would be learning for both of us i am all for learning so thank you and yep we made a lot of progress today and i think by tomorrow i should be able to complete this maybe we'll stream tomorrow again Let's see.